everybody out there uh, for ROP Computer Graphics. Um, this week I decided to put my face on this video just to be a little bit more personable with you guys um, since we're not meeting in class. So you can see I got a mic. Um, I'm just missing like a ring light and a backdrop but getting this uh, video recording um, going. Uh, Hopefully, maybe I'll get a little bit more professional as the weeks go on, but we'll see. Uh, nonetheless, um, I hope you guys are utilizing the videos and the information is pretty clear. If you guys are ever confused about the videos, please email me um, so that I learn what to do um, the next week's following, just because it's a learning process for me too. So hopefully they're okay. I'm going to try to keep them under 30 minutes for sure my goal is to keep them 15 to 30 minutes okay so um, I hope you guys are doing well out there you guys still staying staying safe and um, not sick and that goes for you and your family so I wish all you guys the best out there and again I just want to say I miss you guys you know it's not the greatest situation working from home um, I wish I was in the classroom with you guys um, these next following weeks, especially since, you know, we're getting to the end of summer. So kind of some funner times out there, but fortunately we don't have that. So um, what I have for you guys this week, and sorry, let me move that over, um, is what I call a vintage photo collage, and I'll minimize this a little bit. And I thought it'd be um, another somewhat easy assignment uh, Technically for you guys. I hope that photo P worked for you guys uh, Pretty well. I made the last assignment due today, so I don't have a lot of submissions But from what I've seen so far looks like people were able to utilize that uh, Pretty efficiently so we'll continue to, to use that and gain experience with that and Hopefully that will get a little bit better as time goes on. I think we'll just continue to use that um, and um, what else was I going to say? <laughs> um, yeah, oh, and so um, just kind of on the note of kind of an easier assignment, I think, um, you know, technically it'll be easy for you guys, but I think the visual and um, it just being interesting will be kind of fun for you guys. So uh, let me just review and um, get that a link for the design movement slides I still have up here. And I just want to say that all the continuing assignments going forward um, for the remaining weeks, I will keep on this Google slide sheet. So if you are still catching up or missing an assignment, all that information still should be there. Um, and I put a link right here under reminders for photop.com. These in blue are links, so you guys should be able to click on those. Here's the examples for this week. Um, vintage photo class so we're trying to use references that look old um, either photographs um, magazine advertisements even maybe old-school paintings um, just anything that has that discolored or grainy look and I also have a technique to kind of um, em emphasize that too in photo P so uh, what we want to first do is look up pinterest.com probably the best source for um, looking up examples and keywords right here we got vintage photo collage or vintage photo montage either one should work um, we're using photo P and we're going to just create one photo collage and we got to use at least three images some of these you might see utilizing two but at least three some of you guys will probably use a lot more Make sure we look up old photos, advertise with paintings, or anything that just kind of image-wise looks grainy or low quality. All right, next page here. More examples um, for you here. And uh, here's the criteria. Just to repeat, we're going to use at least a combination of three images. Get five points for that. Um, they must look grainy and old and discolored, so that will kind of help unify the visual of the final presentation. They all kind of look the same. The images must interact with each other. 
um, matching up shape, form, placement of the images together. And that was um, really kind of what we did last week. We're really lining up the uh, shapes of two different objects and combining a photo, a small photo collage that way. Now, as we can see in these examples here, um, it's just going to be a little bit more open space for you guys to kind of do that concept. So for example here, it looks like we got a picture of these boys on a bike looking at a Ferris wheel. And the second reference are these flowers uh, coming out of the Ferris wheel, kind of looks like planter boxes. And so it's interacting, the flowers are interacting with the flower, um, well, the, sorry, the Ferris wheel, it looks like planter boxes, so it looks like they're coming out of it. And also the boys are looking up towards it, so it's kind of interacting that way. Uh, this example here, we got this couple sitting on the ledge, also interacting by kind of looking out into that space. And we have these larger plants and flowers. So sometimes you'll see that in your examples. Um, it kind of looks surreal because the artist, whoever created these, kind of distorts the, the size of some, some aspects. Um, and so obviously, like the flowers, comparatively to the size of the people, would not be that large. Same thing happening here. This lady looks like it's kind of a funny example, but I just really liked how um, artists made it look like she was like, tucked in these mountains. And again, only using two references here, but I mean, just look how like her head's laying up against the mountain here. It looks like her arm is being tucked away um, behind this edge. And that's just really looking at the edges and things lining up and deleting um, to make it give it that illusion like it's behind that mountain okay same thing here deleting the toes right along the edge of here so it looks like they're kind of tucked behind there and we can't see it a um, lot funnier <laughs> um, example here it kind of looks like probably like an old soup ad and the little girls eating you know got the spoon in the mouth and they actually put like a little swimmer on the spoon um, just to kind of connect with what's going on in the bottom here and it looks like three different images we got looks like they put the galaxy in the background looks a little creepy because they poked out the eyes and uh, the mother and daughter and then the old school like pool party reference there this one on the right um, probably looks like it's utilizing more um, modern photography um, just how clear it is it looks like the artist kind of just made it black and gray give it that old feel um, but yeah I mean just as long as it has that old school kind of look or theme I think we're there right here I have a video link for you guys um, and I'm going to fairly well almost demonstrate some of the t steps here this is in Photoshop so I'm going to use photo P for this I don't have all the exact references, but stuff that's close. And it's only about four or five minutes. Um, no talking, it just kind of goes through all the steps here. And I think that should be pretty informative. Okay, so um, I'd recommend using Pinterest to look up some more examples for you guys. But uh, we're going to jump right into Photo P. And I already edited a a crowd shot and just to zoom in pretty close didn't do too well on the editing um, I used a layer mask but uh, just for time wise I'm just trying to get it done here but uh, I'm gonna go back over the layer mask and also the polygonal lasso because that actually connects pretty well with our assignment this week using a Bob Ross painting here kind of stretch that out enter the place and I'll actually place it behind the crowd so we already got two references going on and uh, what I want to do is delete the background of where the clouds are so I can put in a new one here and if you guys look over to the tools here I'm gonna click on lasso that's really just open it's almost like using a pencil but polygonal lasso just uses straight lines I'm gonna zoom in here click that again and so we can think of it uh, like using a scissor, okay? Just like little cuts here and there. 
So the more detail you have, obviously the more cuts you want to make. And I'm going to try and do my best here around the tree. Got to be careful not to click too fast because I notice when you like double click really fast, it actually like wants to load the selection right away and then you have to kind of go backwards. There we go. I'll do some longer strokes here. So again, just pretend like you're using a scissor. Can't get those curves like you would a scissor, but I think uh, get pretty close here. All right. Get a little bit better there. It's gonna be pretty rough edits here on my demos just so I can save time. Move this over. And again, this is a program that that's online. So depending on like internet speed and your computer, sometimes it might lag a little bit. So for the polygonal lasso, what you want to do is go all the way around. So I'm going outside of the canvas space and I want to end up right where I started, right here on the side. And if it doesn't load automatically, just make sure you cross that point right here. If you guys can see that. Okay, where that little crosshair is. And hit enter or return. And it's taking a while to load. Should load. Please load. Oh, thank you. Woo. Okay, so there we go. We loaded. I forgot over here. Got to rasterize. That's a smart object here. So let's right click. And let's rasterize that so we can delete that space. Click again. It's lagging on me. Okay. Let's delete. Crunch your fingers. There we go. Okay. Command or control delete. All right. D for deselecting there. Let's zoom back out. Now we got a nice empty space here. Cool. So I might drag those mountains down a little bit here, open up the space. And then um, I have, let's see where we're at, an old vintage gallery, gallery, <laughs> galaxy photo, sorry. And uh, we'll place that behind. There we go. I already got three references going on. And um, just for kicks, I'll drag in that girl different photo of a girl from the video but kind of get the same concept here and um, so for the layer mask I'd probably use a layer mask on this one and just delete those for a second and make this bigger let's hold shift here let's rasterize and let's add a Layer mask. So I got my little red marker here so you guys can follow. Layer raster mask. Add reveal all. So that's just going to keep that white right there. Bring this in here. I'm gonna grab my brush. Okay, the functions with the brush are still here. Size you could still change with the left or right bracket, and you probably want to. Lower the hardness to about 80-90% just for a gradual soft edge here. Okay. Let's see if we can start going. There we go. So this is going to be a rough edit. Just save time for the video. But you can see it works just like a layer mask. Now I recommend, you know, you guys can use this program on your Chromebooks. But for a layer mask or just really anything, I think, utilize a mouse if you can. I don't think you want to use the touchpad for this. Okay. Let me get that little red marker off so I can see what I'm doing here. Okay. And I delete where the legs are going to be. Okay. Let's go a little bit. You can see it's a little glitchy, but hey, we got to work with what we have, you know? Okay, let's say that works. I think we can visualize 
what's going on here again left and right bracket increase or decrease that size so uh, I've already showed you polygonal lasso or this layer mask and I think those are the go-to on here if you still want to use the polygonal lasso on on this one feel free okay so let's bring back some other ones here all right we can see um, you know we got the girl through the mountains here okay looks like she's kind of looking down on the crowd and look at where the um, what's that called the canteen pitcher water pitcher is right here and this is a good space to actually bring this in front of the mountain Okay, so you guys have to think layering wise, how do we do that? Well, you can probably select around that copy paste to bring it in front, but you can also add a layer mask to the mountains here. Layer raster mask. And just in this section right here, delete that. And if you line it up right, Deleting the mountains and take that off. The thing is, you really have to place it exactly where you want because if you move the photo, then it's not going to line up right. So, okay. Now it gives it the idea that that um, is in front of the mountains there. Still got some deleting of the background to do, but you guys, hopefully, you guys get the idea. Let's see then. X to switch colors that still works you'll notice again a lot of the shortcut keys are uh, the same for this so hopefully that helps you guys sorry I can't help but finish this okay so there we go now um, even in here look at that if this if this ex is exactly where I want it I'd probably bring the water spout right here out so it looks like it's in front of the mountain here and go back and look like yeah I think that looks pretty good now in the video you see some like sprinkles that they're adding here and those are PNGs I tried to look to find for some sprinkles but a lot of them you had to like subscribe to um, like an online service so hopefully maybe you guys can find stuff like that um, here's a couple tidbits for you guys to um, kind of infuse this all together. I think this looks good for the assignment. I think um, it's definitely doable. But if you guys want to increase um, the lighting here, there's a couple of things you guys can do. One is add a new layer and maybe add like a very kind of older tone, like soft beige, orange, or possibly even brown. Okay. And we can fill that. Option delete. Does that still work? Yep. Can lower the opacity right down here. Okay. So you can see how kind of foggy that is. And right to the left, we have those blend modes. So hopefully you guys remember some of those. And for this one, multiply. Yeah, it kind of works. It kind of darkens everything. But might help kind of, you know, bring orange light and overlay everything. It's okay. Here's another one we can do. And this is called Light Leaks. This is totally new. If you guys have seen this before, kind of in old Polaroids or photographs, what happens is when sometimes when you have that film in there, light leaks in there and it kind of discolors the film. And so you get these kind of cool effects using the old film. Here's kind of an example, maybe real example of what that would look like over a photograph. You can see that a lot of coloration could cover it. So we don't want to use examples that like, color all over but maybe some subtle examples like let's say um, let's just do this one here so when you're looking at these what you're looking at is this black space here that's all going to disappear and it's going to preserve this orange space I'm going to drag this over which I already have and let's see, I'll bring that right on top here and these you can stretch out you don't have to worry about holding shift might not even need to cover the whole thing. We'll see what it looks like first. And on your blend modes, you want to change this to screen. Now screen preserves light pixels, ignores the dark. So watch what happens to this black space here. Gone. 
So we got this nice orangey tone that overlaps all of the photos here, it kind of really unifies them and brings them together. And you can even lower the opacity if you want that a little less. Okay. And you can move the picture around. You know, if you maybe you want it more towards the bottom. You, know, you can rotate it that way. And um, you know, if you have too much color on one that you want a little suggestion here is on that um, on those layers you can actually increase the dark pixels for them to kind of go away and so that's what it would look like here you go to image adjustments levels let's see if it's working here I think I I think I have to rasterize it first let's try that There we go. And so watch what happens when I um, bring in the dark tone. Oh, it's not working. Oh, grabbing the wrong one, sorry. Right up here. So watch what happens. See how it kind of goes away, that haziness goes away? Just because I'm increasing the dark pixels, which get ignored. Kind of like the hazy look, though. It just depends. Okay, so levels is how you can manipulate that. Okay. Um, last thing here, I'm going to turn that off. Now, if you have some newer photos that don't look old, uh, we can kind of make them look older by adding some grain. So I'm going to do that on the crowd here. I'm going to tick that off. So you can see it's it's an older picture. I think I even looked up like Woodstock. So it's an older picture. It's black and white. It's pretty clear though. Um, but we can see that this one up here is a little out of focus. So there's a couple things you can do. Select that layer. You can go to Filter, Noise, and Noise will, um, when you add noise, it actually makes it grainier. So take a look here. I'm going to zoom in, uncheck Preview, see the difference. Now, when you add noise, what it does is on a computer, it separates all the RGB channels a little bit. So you get like red, green, blue type color. If you want to take that off, hit Monochromatic. And if you want to lessen the grain, can just make it really subtle and sometimes I can help but really it's just kind of fun to play around with can even do that for the painting here with stuff uh, if you have older photos but it's still in focus okay so last thing I would need here is just for these to interact a little bit better is like have something coming out of the spout here like maybe pouring on the crowd maybe it's like a rainbow or something or whatever else um, and that would give me five images and I think they would all work well. So hopefully that makes a uh, good sense for you guys. Hopefully you guys are doing okay with photop.com. Uh, please, if you guys are having any troubles, please reach out to me. So I know what to put in my next videos here. And, um, also if we need to meet as a class on Wednesday, I can try to just do a live class session, answer questions, share my screen, and we can all kind of. Um, get to the same page that way. Uh, but nonetheless, I hope you guys are doing well and um, hope to see you or talk to you guys soon. All right, take care.